Oh hi there, I am Black Bright as you know and welcome to my channel. Thank you for inviting me into your space. If you like what I talk about, put the thumbs down, put the thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like to do. Um, this in, this video is inspired by um, Percival Latouche. He's the president of the resettlement program for returnees in Jamaica. And he's been, he was in England for over 30 years. He's moved back to Jamaica and he's living there now. And he's warning retirees or returnees not to come back to Jamaica under no condition. He says it's brutal, it's barbaric, deaths have gone up by 47%. I read somewhere that 200 have retire, retirees or returnees have, have been killed since the year 2000. And you know what the sad thing about that is? Is that most of those are the Windrush generation. Most of those are the ones who came to the UK in the late 1940s, right up to the late 60s, early 70s. And they have been working like a dog, day and night, through the night, in the cold, in a small room, half of them. That's how they started out. A lot of them never wanted to tell Jamaicans that because they felt embarrassed. So they made out like they were doing well. When four, five, six, seven, sometimes eight people in one room, shuck up, you know. That's how they were living. And in the end, each one by one, they managed to save enough to go into different, into their own properties then. Maybe rent a room first. And after renting a room, look about getting their own homes. But some of them, you know, it was just shift after shift after shift. So it's sad because these same people who left Jamaica thinking, and I'm only talking about Jamaica because this is, I'm responding to per Percival's to Latouche's um, video or news piece, right? You know, a lot of them, they left Jamaica temporarily, they thought. The Jamaican dollar wasn't saying nothing. So they thought the sterling pound would take them and give them a better standard of living. They didn't realise that there'd be lots of taxes and, you know, like we have um, council tax, you have um what you call it tv tax then on top of that they've got to pay the rent then they've got to pay the bills and i know you have to pay that everywhere but on top of that even when you get your money um i think how much of it is gone i don't know if it's 20 percent they take out for national insurance that's for the health service um your taxes your um pension if you work for a government but now it's compulsory so when you get your salary, it's two thirds of what you earn. And so out of all of that, you still having to buy, pay your rent and do everything else. So when they manage to get a house, saved up all those years and managed to get a house, all in their mind for these retirees is that when I reach in my 70s, I can come out of this cold country and I can go back to Jamaica, the land I love. That is what they're thinking. That is the thinking behind it. You know, they never wanted to stay here. So when they, when they manage to reach that stage in their 70s and they're still in reasonable health, that is their goal. So then they sell up. Hopefully they, they find a little place in Jamaica. They get their little pension and that is supposed to last them until they die because they know that the health service is no good. They've got no other income coming in. It's not like they can work. So this is how they live. It's really erroneous thinking when people think that returnees have money. It's erroneous thinking. And if they do have a little money, it's because they've worked for 50, 60 years and saved up for it. Not for somebody to come and chop them up and do all kinds of things to them. Because they think, you know, that what are they doing here? They come off better than us. They haven't. Comparatively, you're better than them. You've been in the sunshine all these years. They've been struggling, sometimes without no sleep. My mum was telling me about her story 
And I was choked because when she left Jamaica, she came and she and a woman tricked her. The woman said to her, look, you can come and stay with me. I know where there's some place for you to live and you can come and stay with me. When my mum reached, um, I think it was Liverpool Station, she said, she couldn't find the woman. If it wasn't for one man that she saw on the train who said, you know, he lives somewhere and if you need any help or if you need anything, here's my number. God forbid what would happen to my mum. And then she was trying to get find the number um, out of her suitcase. A police helped her to open her suitcase. Didn't know where she was going on her own. And she reckoned from the time she, she arrived there on the Saturday evening or something. And the Monday morning, she was out on the streets early in the morning looking for a sewing job, going from one place to another, working nights and all kind of stuff. Now she has her little home and she feels comfortable because she, all she says is that that's all I wanted, just to have my home, just to have a roof over my head so no one can kick me out. And when you see a lot of these Jamaicans, that's all they've ever wanted and all they've ever wanted. Not my mum, my mum ne never wants to go back to Jamaica, but you know, the majority of people just want to get out of the cold country and then go back to where um, they grew up, to a culture that they're familiar with. And it is so sad that there's people out there who would rob them of those last, last few years that they were hoping to enjoy. It's really, really sad, and it's a, it's a, it's a lack of understanding. It's almost like people think that people who are in another country, whether it's the United States, Canada, America, or the UK, it's like they think we're loaded. I don't know why they have that perception. When I went to Jamaica the other day in September, people in Jamaica dress better than me. When they're buying food, they're not buying a like a bibi bibi food. Buying butter fish and all this expensive food and you won't see how them line up outside Kentucky and Kentucky ain't cheap. So it's not like, you know, they're, they're in some kind of poverty like when you see these pictures on that they show you on the TV with people looking emaciated and then don't have nothing. It's not like that. In Jamaica, you go to Jamaica. I mean, I guess there are the there are certain places where you know you will see extreme poverty, but the majority of people and the people are chopping up these people. It's not like they're hard up half of them, but it's it's not right. You have to understand that in the UK, there's a there's a a perception of affluence you know when you hear them on the news and all the politicians making out like we're all doing okay we're not doing okay we look okay it's our culture it's the jamaican culture to look okay even if you're struggling because you don't want people to know your business but that doesn't mean that you're well off or you're doing well you know, people, you know, if you're smart, you just, you can, you don't have to look like crap. You can go to certain places and you can mix and match and you can buy something and you can look decent. People might think, say, boy, look, look how she changed her clothes often. She must have money. No, I not say it go. If I go down the road and I go to TK Maxx and I see something reduced from $27.99 to $3.99, we will buy it. I'm not ashamed. I'm not going to pay $27.99 for something I can get for $3.99. And if you get trainers, sometimes you can get some trainers reduced from $19.99 to $19.99. Never pick that up. That is a bargain. So not because you see me in £99 trainers, I'm doing well. Because I got them for $19.99. So sometimes we're creative with money. You don't have to spend a lot of money to look good. So when these people are robbing these and killing and murdering, they can't just take their money, man. It's a real sin. And the thing is, what I don't understand is, it's not like they're going to have the money on them. The money's going to be transferred in a bank account. 
because you can only bring so much over to Jamaica anyway. So what is the purpose? Why would you want to do that to people? Those people could be your mother. It could be aunt. Don't you think the murderers out there, don't you think that could be my mother, that could be my auntie, that could be my sister, that could be my brother, it could be my uncle, it could be my father, it could be my grandfather. Don't you think like that? I just think it's such a shame. I mean, to be honest, I went there. I mean, I didn't go there to live. I just went there as a to visit. So I guess I'm not seen as a threat. I don't know. I don't know if there's a mannerism that goes with returnees. I don't know if there's an arrogance that goes with returnees. I don't know if they have a, something about them, an air. That draws that draws that kind of attention to them. But I've got I've got friends who've returned to um, Jamaica and they're living good. Nobody's not troubling them. So it's not everybody. So when Percival Latou, she's telling one woman, she said she sent all her stuff over and she's planning to come to back to Jamaica. And he said, Don't bother, not bother come. It's this and it's that. So if if he's saying that, I mean not not everybody, the puss and dog don't have the same luck. She might be a sensible woman. I know you have people who are bossy. When they got there, they think they're the bee's knees. That's not the attitude to have. But not everybody is like that. And I really, I would like to think it's your disposition that gets you through in Jamaica. I'd like to think that if you're respectful and you're polite and you keep a low profile that you're okay. That is what I'd like to think. I'd like to believe that the people who get murdered, there's a, some kind of reason apart from them being returnees and apart from them having money. But I don't know what it is. Without knowing history, all we hear is that they're being murdered. So that's all I've got to say, peeps. I don't know what else to say. Bye-bye.